Hey all and do welcome to my vlog. My name is Erin and today we're going to be talking about culture in world building, specifically language education and careers. This will be a multi-part series but I'm not entirely sure how many videos it's going to be yet so we're just starting off here. Now when I'm talking about language this is not going to be a guide to creating language. I have never done that so I am not a good person to ask how to do that. The use and creation of language is going to be entirely up to you as a writer. Know that it is complex and multifaceted and your world should reflect that there is more than one in existence. Number one, what languages exist in your world? Languages are a means to both connect and separate your characters. They indicate culture, geographical origin, and heritage. You don't have to go all J.R.R. Tolkien on your story and create an entirely new language, but you are certainly welcome to do that if you so desire. As long as you have more than one language mentioned, you're doing good. There are thousands of languages that exist in our world and thousands more that have been lost to history. The same could be said for the world you're making. Number two, what is the dominant language? Wherever you're going to be living, there will be a dominant language or a couple dominant languages that most or all people are going to be able to speak. The same is going to be for whatever countries you are developing. It's gonna get tricky if you have multiple languages going on and a bunch of your characters are not multilingual because then you're gonna run into some serious problems with communication. Number three, dialects. A dialect is a specific form of language that is particular to a regional area or a social group. Probably the easiest way to display the use of dialects without being a linguistics expert yourself would be through slang. You need things to be comprehensible to the reader, but you can still highlight the differences. A common example of this would be the differences between British English and Canadian English, say with the loo versus the bathroom, or a rubbish bin versus a garbage can. Number four, nonverbal languages. You are not limited exclusively to verbal languages in your story. Sign languages, writing, art, etc. are all forms that you can take advantage of. If you have deaf or mute characters who use sign language, you want to do your research as to how sign languages actually work. Number five, fluency. If you're going to have characters fluent in multiple languages, state why. Did they study it in school? Did they live close to a border? Did they learn because of some diplomatic relations they're in charge of? Do they have someone visiting and they want them to feel welcome? Are they an immigrant who's learning the mother tongue of their new country? Did they learn the languages out of necessity or because of proximity to multiple languages? If your characters are not fluent in a language that they encounter, how can you write this without disrupting the flow of your story? You can make it a plot point if it's relevant to do so. Is it something that your character needs to overcome? Presumably, if you're introducing a character who only speaks another language, or you're putting your character in a situation where they can't communicate, it's going to be something they have to overcome. You can show character development as they grow their understanding and learn to connect with others through this new skill. If you're using real languages and you want your characters to be bilingual or multilingual, it's a good idea to talk to people who are that themselves and understand how the language processes for them. Now we're flowing from language into the related topic of education. Number six, educational institutions. History offers us a lot of examples of educational institutions from private and public schools, universities, apprenticeships, etc. There are plenty of options to get your characters educated in whatever they're interested in. Is there a hierarchy in your world based on the type of education? For example, in our world, some people might think that private schools are superior to public schools, whether or not that is actually the case. Is there any stigma against a lack of education or the type of education someone might receive? Number seven, accessibility. Who has access to education in your world? If anyone is excluded from education, what are the circumstances? Do educational institutions offer support to students who might need them? Examples would be language interpreters, extra time on exams, classroom assistance, etc. Are the buildings where people attend lessons accessible to all students? Is education mandatory or voluntary? Does it cost people money? Financial cost to an education could be a serious barrier to your characters and decrease the overall accessibility of education to the base population. Number eight, commitment. How many years are people expected to devote to their education? In our world, you're looking at anywhere from 12 to 15 years for a most basic education, and then an additional two to 12 years to get trained for a specific career. At what age would your characters be expected to begin school if there is an expected age at all? Is the education worth it? Consider what is valuable to your characters and what is valuable to society. Is your character learning just for the sake of learning or are they aiming to have their education prepare them for a specific career? Do they emerge from their education able to survive in the world or are they simply a little bit richer in knowledge? What is your character pursuing and how much effort do they have to put in to get there? Number nine, regulation. 
Is education standardized? Are instructors regulated? This also tips into our next topic of jobs and careers. Are working conditions designed to favor the worker or the employer? Are employers, corporations, guilds, etc. held accountable for their actions, or do they influence the powers that be to allow them to exploit people? What regulations might be in place that would directly impact your character and their career? How is abuse in jobs and educational institutes handled? Are people protected? Number 10. Life after education. What jobs are open to your characters? Are those jobs valued or is there a stigma against them? And do they provide value to society? This is different than if it is valued because a lot of jobs do provide extremely important value to society, but there is still a stigma against them. Things like janitorial work, garbage collection, transportation drivers, etc. may have a stigma against them, but our societies would basically collapse without them. If your character wants to apply for a certain job, what is the protocol surrounding that? Are people able to switch careers or are they kind of stuck in place once they've chosen something to do? So that is all I got for you today, but I have not forgotten about the giveaway that I announced during my live stream. The winner is this wonderful person. Thank you so much for entering the giveaway. You are walking away with a signed copy of my second book, Olympian Confessions Hera. I also want to remind everyone that I am still recruiting for my street team for my upcoming contemporary romance novel, Heart and Soul. If you are interested, all the information will be in the description below so you can check it out and sign up if you want. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you liked this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. If you'd like to be notified as soon as I upload, then ring that bell. All my social media links will be in the description below. Both of my books, Olympian Confessions, Hades and Persephone, and Olympian Confessions, Hera, are available now in ebook and paperback. If you would like your manuscript critiqued by me, you can check out my critique service on my website. And I'll see you all next week with another video. Bye! Say hello! Oh. Look how cute you are! <laughs>